Hello and welcome to Cloud Champ. In this video, we are going to learn about very important networking service which is VPC or Virtual Private Cloud. It is very important for a DevOps or a cloud engineer to know how to create VPCs, how to create public subnet, private subnet, how to attach internet gateways because every project starts with VPC. So to learn everything about VPC, watch this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe for more videos on AWS and cloud. Let's get started. So I'm going to create a VPC. I'm going to click on create VPC and give a name, my VPC. You can give any name you want. And we're going to give the CIDR block a classless enter domain range, which will tell us how much range we will have. So I'm going to pass the range as 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Slash 16 means 65,536 IPs for this VPC. Then I'm going to click on create VPC. Now this VPC is created. You can see it's, you can see it's present here in the my VPC with this CIDR block. Once this VPC is created, I'm going to create subnets in it because we want to have a structure like this uh, so if I show you this image we want to have a structure something like this we want to have VPC inside that VPC we need a public subnet and a private subnet public subnet to host our applications or anything that we want to expose to the internet and private subnet that should contain our database which should be private to the people and internet should not be connected to it so I'm going to create subnets here but first I'll select my VPC which is 040F so this one, I'm going to go to subnets in here. Now I don't have any subnets present. So no matching resources. I'm going to create two subnets. So click on create subnet option. Which VPC do you want to create subnets in? I want to create it in my VPC. I'm going to click on my VPC, give it a name. So let's say public subnet. And I need, you can choose what AZ do you want to launch in. Or if you don't choose anything, AWS will randomly select it. So I'm going to launch my private uh, public AZ, public subnet in my US East 1A. Okay. Then I'm going to pass in my CIDR block for the subnet, which should be inside the uh, CIDR block of the VPC. So I'm going to choose 10.0.0 slash 24. So if I show you what does that mean, so CIDR ranges, CIDR.xyz, this is, this is the website that you can go and to check. So earlier we had the VPC CIDR as 10.0.0 slash 16. Slash 16 means 65,536 IPs starting from 10.0.1 till 10.0.255.254. When you choose slash 16, which means this to last octet is going to be changed. Right. Starting from 10.0.1, so one will be two, three, four, five, six till 255. Then wow. this will be changed to 1, then uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 till 255, then it will become 2, 1, 2, 3 till 255 similarly. So, so on we get 65,536 IPs that we have given to our VPC, this VPC, uh, which is okay. this one. Right, right. So inside this VPC, I'm going to create a subnet, which is going to be a range of 24. So when you pass 24, you get 256 IPs starting from 10.0.1 till 254. So when you use slash 24, only the last octet is going to change. So we have the range starting from 10.0.1 till 254. And so in total, we get 256 IPs. So we don't actually get 256. Five of them are reserved by AWS, but the count is 256. Uh, so we'll do that. So I've give the side range as 10.0.0 slash 24. So this will create a subnet for me. If I want, I can also create a new subnet right here, but I'm going to do that separately. So I'm going to click on create subnet. It has created one subnet, which is for public subnet. And we, this is the ID. This is the CIDR range. And if I show you the available IP addresses are just 251. Like here it shows 256, but it says yeah. that the available IPv4 are 251 because AWS takes five IPs for themselves to do some task. And we'll see uh, like, I'll show you how they use it. So now let's go and create a new subnet, which is going to be private subnet, same in the same VPC, my VPC. So I'll give, I'm going to give this name as private subnet. And I'm going to launch this subnet in my US East 1B availability zones. 
So now I have to give my CIDR block uh, for my private submit as well. Previously I gave the CIDR block as 10.0.0.0/24. So this range, which means starting from 1 till 255. Now for this submit, I need to give a different range, which should not overlap this one. For example, if I choose something like 10.0.0.0/24, which was already given to the previous one, if I choose this and click on create submit, it will give me an error saying CIDR address overlaps with existing subnet CIDR. If I make a change here, which is like 10.0.0.1, it will still give me an error because this 10.0.1 comes in the range with the previous CIDR that starts from 1 till 254. So we cannot use this last octet. We need to make a change in here or here somewhere other than last octet. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to choose a range which is going to be 10. 0 0.1.0 because if I choose this I get a different range right now the range is 10.0.1 uh, till 254 but if I make a change here make it 1 and now I get different set of 256 IPs oh, okay. so I'm going to choose that and click on create subnet so this has created another subnet for me right now I have two subnets present one is public and one is private so let me show you. I mean, right now, right, right now, they are both, they are both, um, right. I mean, you just named them public and private, right? But right now, they are both private. Yeah, they are both private right now, even though the name is public and private, because we have not attached the internet that makes this submit actually public. So, okay. let's go and launch an instance in both of them real quick. So, I'm going to launch an instance okay. to show you how Internet Gateway works. So, I'm going to click on uh, launch instance option and give this a name as public instance and I'm going to choose Amazon Linux keep here something that I have in my machine so EC2 key okay and if I need to change the networking settings make it in my VPC that I created in the public subnet and you can see it says auto assign public IP is disabled you need to enable it but if you want it to be default you can just make the change in the subnet so I can go here choose a subnet so first choose the VPC then go to subnets in this I can go to public subnets go to actions click on edit subnet settings and I have the option to auto assign public IP before if I don't enable this option I cannot get the IP address so I'm going to now it is going to be assigned automatically and we going to choose a, a security group so security group ok I don't have one so I am going to create a new one because security group are VPC bound, AZ bounded so in this AZ we don't have any security group so we need to create one so public is G. You can give any name you want. Okay. I am going to have SSH rule and I can I am also going to have HTTP from anywhere. So HTTP okay. from anywhere. Alright, now click on launch instance and this instance is going to be created. Let's also launch an instance in the private subnet as well. So I am going to click okay. on view all instance. You can see a subnet is created uh, which is in pending state. I am going to stop this because I am not using it right now. So stop it and click on launch instance to launch another instance so instance private sub instance Amazon Linux key pair is going to be EC2 key edit the settings network settings to change to where do you want to launch this I want to launch it in my VPC in private subnet and I can choose if I want to have the IP or not so for private submit mostly we don't have the IPs but if you want you can choose to have it so I'm going to skip that for now and choose the existing security group which we created right now public SC and click on launch instance so it says some error is there so that is just a glitch if you try to do stuff very fast AWS sometimes gives you an error but no problem so now we have two instances launched in the uh, EC2 public instance and private instance but even though this is named as public having a public IP it will still not be connected to the 
it we cannot able to assist into it because we don't have the internet connection right right so if i try to connect to this it will show me an error even though we have the security group rule saying 22 allowed so we have the security group rule 22 allowed from anywhere and we also have the keeper attached to it but still it will you won't be able to connect to it because you are not connected to the internet so fail to connect we are unable to connect our instance make sure that the instance network settings are configured correctly and we need to attach a, a internet gateway to this so let's go and attach an internet gateway and how do you do that so to attach an internet gateway we need to use stuff like root tables uh, and internet gateways and inside this root table we need to add uh, add our in subnet which we want to be connected to the internet gateway so so first I need to create a great gateway I'm going to click on internet gateways right now I don't have any internet gateway and I, if I show you what does it means so let's see what does AWS tell us about internet gateway so internet gateway enables resources in your public subnet such as EC2 instance to connect to the internet if the resource has public IP before address right so we have an instance in the public subnet uh, and we we can we are not able to connect to it because we we don't have the internet gateway enabled right so we're going to enable that if you see here an internet gateway enables you to connect to an instance using your local computer so i'm going to go here and create an internet gateway first so click on create internet gateway give it a name so my igw or my internet gateway and click on create internet gateway this is going to click create an internet which is in detached state right now right okay wait, so we just went and you created the internet gateway right so yes i created this internet gateway right now which is in detached state i need to attach it to the vpc that i want so i can click on the okay. attach vpc option and select the vpc that i want to use so this is my vpc and i'm going to click on attach internet gateway and this is attached to my vpc right you can see the vpc id here and it says attached now i'm going to this root table option so just a second going to this root table it already has a default uh, root table but which so you can see here there is details roots subnet association edge association and all these different options so we're going to use that so just a second mm. right all right so we have uh, let's, let's create a root, different root table this is the default one i'm going to click on create root table option and give this a name so it can be anything my rt or my root table select the vpc you want so this is my vpc right yes the one you just created okay sorry yeah that's the one you just created yeah yes yeah. yes this is the one we created right now which 10.0.0 slash 16 side range and I'm going to click on create root table once this root table is created we can see roots here subnet association and all this other option we just need to focus on these two right so we have a root with this side range that is defined for our VPC for the target local but I'm going to click on edit roots option and add a root that is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 which means all IPs in this subnet should be connected to internet gateway so I'm going to click on internet gateway this is the internet gateway that I created right now so I'm right. selecting that and clicking on save changes once I do that I have two routes present one with the local and one with the internet gateway but I also need to add the subnets in here so right now I don't have any subnet associated right so let's say I want to attach this internet gateway to the public subnet how can I do that? I can click on edit subnet association option and select my public subnet here. Select my public subnet and then click on save association. Once I do this, then my subnet is connected to the internet. So you can see you have successfully updated subnet association and in subnet association, I get the option as public subnet connected to the root table, which is connected to the internet gateway. So if I go here, hopefully I should be able to log into this.
Now you can see we are inside the instance and if I run anything, let's say, let's say ping Google. Sorry. Google.com. So you can see it's, it is connected to the internet like because we can talk to the Google. We are able to get, connect to the internet. You can see if I do duplicate, I'm able to get the index.html for this cider.xyz which means we are able to connect to the internet and we have we can talk to the internet if i do ping.amazon.com or anything i can get the results of the packet because i am connected to the internet same way if i try to do it with the subnet that is not connected to the internet which is our uh, which is our private subnet but also does not have the public ip to it so we won't, yeah we won't be able to connect to it because it says the instance does not have public ipv4 address right so this is how you do how you uh, attach an internet gateway to to an instance, right? Mm -hmm. So let me go over the steps again. First, we created a VPC. First, we created a VPC and we launched two subnets in it, public and private. And inside this public subnet, if you go here, you need to enable the app option, edit subnet settings, and you need to enable the auto assign public IP yes, for address. Public. So that is for the public subnet and you can also enable a resource name DNS record on launch if you want. So we can make the changes after the instance is created, subnet is created as well. Okay. So let's enable all those. And then once we created the two subnets, we created a, we created a internet gateway and a route table. Right. So nice. let me show you what route tables does. Like if you see the definition by AWS. So root table AWS, you can see what is an AWS root table. Root table contains a set of rules called set of rules called routes that determine where the network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed. So right now we were using public subnet. So we attached it to the internet gateway, right? So we attached it to an internet gateway uh, like this. So our public subnet is connected to this root table and this root table has a route coming from internet gateway but okay. if it is a private subnet which is not a public subnet we use something known as NAT gateway so you can see internet gateway here this NAT gateway as well NAT gateway why do we use it so so there was something known as NAT instance before NAT gateway NAT instance also known as bastion host or jump boxes so NAT gateway is network address translation service you can use NAT gateway so that the instance in private subnet can connect to the services outside your VPC but external services cannot initiate a connection with those instances. So if you have a sub instance running in private subnet and you want it to talk to the internet but internet should not talk back to it. So how can you do that? You can do that using NAT gateway. So we are going to see how to create that.